Hey everyone, Ben Tata here in my shop in Kansas City today, and we're going to talk a little bit about herringbone. Herringbone is one of the more classical of the parquet patterns. It's really timeless in its look and beauty. It's a relatively simple pattern. It's made up of identical pieces where every other row is laid at 90 degrees to the rows adjacent to it. Um, and when you build that pattern across the whole floor, you get a really strikingly beautiful effect, particularly if you have some natural light coming in, uh, hitting the floor. Because of those two grain orientations, the way the light reflects back to your eye, you get almost a light and dark striping effect, similar to a well-manicured lawn. Now, the way that we meet those uh, adjoining rows next to each other in a traditional herringbone, they're stacked like this. We could also do what we would call a chevron herringbone like this, where instead of stacking, we're actually cutting or mitering the joints. So one thing that's important to note with herringbone is the length of the piece should be a multiple of the width in a true herringbone pattern. Now that's not 100% imperative. I could still build a herringbone floor where the length is not a multiple of the width. The one thing I would lose is every other row, which should be oriented the same direction, these seams should line up perfectly if my length is a multiple of the width. If it's not, then they'll be offset slightly, and that's the one, one thing you'll lose. These, both of these here are a three by 18, so a six to one ratio for length to width. What that, what that ratio is, is really more of a design choice. You can make it as long or as short as you like, but somewhere in the neighborhood of four to one to six to one is a good place to start if you're unsure. I just think that yields a really nice balanced looking piece and pattern as it's built across the floor. Today I'm going to be doing a two and a quarter by nine inch material herring bone, so that'll be a four to one ratio. Let's head over to the saw and we'll get started cutting. I'm going to use a table saw sled to cut my herringbone pieces. Now you could certainly do this on a miter saw if you prefer to. You just need to set up a stop so that you can cut identical length pieces. Uh, but I'm going to use a sled. You can see I've got just a simple block here with a screw in the side that's going to be my adjustable stop. So I got it close to that nine inches first, and then I can turn that screw in or out to micro adjust it until it's exactly where I want it to be. So I just take four of my pieces put them together uh, and then just make sure that the length of my piece uh, matches that length exactly. So I adjust it to that point and then I'm ready to cut all my pieces. From there, I'll go to the router table and groove them all and then they'll be ready to go. From there, we just need to determine our working line spacing and the working line intervals. The working line spacing is how far on either side of our center line we're going to have a working line, and the working line interval is how often we're going to have a set of working lines as we move across the floor. I'm also going to take the time here to lay out lines for a border. Even if I'm not installing one, I like to do this because it aids in transferring our working lines across the room. To determine my working line spacing, I can either measure or calculate the distance. To measure it, I simply draw a diagonal across my workpiece and then measure the length of it and then divide by four. And that's how far from my center line over that my spacing is gonna be for my two working lines. To calculate it, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So you imagine just taking this little piece out as a triangle, okay? The Pythagorean theorem is that for any right triangle, the length of the two shorter sides to the power of two added together will equal the length of the longest side squared. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, I know this is two and a quarter and this is two and a quarter, so I can use that equation to determine the length of this and then divide by four. Also important to note that this length, okay, is how far each piece in a given row is going to move the pattern 
down the length of the room so I can estimate how many pieces I'm going to need to get from one end of the room to the other. For working line spacing, which is how often I'm going to need a set of working lines, I'm determining that based on the length of my piece. Okay, so I can either assemble some of my pattern and measure that, or again, I can calculate it using the same formula. I'm just using the length of my piece this time as the longest arm, the longest leg in this triangle. So this is nine inches in my case, okay? And I can plug that number into the equation. I know these two distances are equal since this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. It's an isosceles right triangle. So I can calculate what the length of this side is based on that number. Now we can take those numbers that we calculated or measured for our working lines spacing and our working line intervals and transfer them down to our floor. First, I'm going to start by just marking the length of that um, working line intervals, which was just under six and three eighths. Okay. And then I'll come to my uh, center line here and mark either side of my center where my working lines should hit. Okay, and then add those marks on the other end and we can snap our working line. And then I like to take my trammels and set them to the space for my working line intervals. All right. And then I can really quickly transfer these across my room and I can snap all my working lines before I even begin installation. Okay, now we've gone through and transferred our working lines across the room. We're ready to set our starting block and begin our installation. Important to note where your working line intersects one of your diagonals. Okay, that's where you want to set the point of your starting block to begin your pattern and have it centered correctly. It really doesn't matter which one you start at. I could go to any of them and make it work. Okay, but that's that's where you want to start it. You don't want to set your block right in the center point. Okay, if I make this block a square, I could just line that front point up and the back point up on my working line right there. And I know that it is set both these sides at a 45 degree angle. Sometimes I think it's helpful just as a visual aid to, uh, you know, let's hop over to that one. Uh, you can see I drew this little grid on here, sort of give a visual of how this pattern builds, why we snap those working lines where we do. I've got the diagonal from that point, and then uh, the center of this section here, I've got a second diagonal, okay? And then on these ones as well, and you can see as I build this, this is just representing that working line. And that's representing the other working line, and then right in the center of them is the center line of my room, okay? So the center of the pattern is running right through the middle of all those points. And if I plan this out correctly, should be hitting center of one of my boards right there at the center point of my room. Okay. The reason we teach to start right here is because if you start right there correctly, you know the floor is going to be centered in all four directions when it gets up to all four walls of the room. You can, not and I prefer to do this since I know that measurement, I can measure back from 
where I would where that diagonal intersects that working line, a multiple of that distance, and then I can actually begin my installation back at the wall. And then I can build this whole first chevron, as it were, from one end of the room to the other. I prefer that way because it's a little it's a little bit easier to just lay this going this direction than it is to remove your block and have to work backwards on this half of the room. Uh, if you're going to do that, though, you just need to, once I set my block, I'm always going to dry lay the pattern until I get to the center of my room just to make sure it's hitting exactly where it should uh, and then make an adjustment if need be. But then I can begin my installation back at the wall instead of the center of the room. Here I've dry laid up to my center point to make sure that it's hitting accurately and then I'm ready to begin my installation. I first spread some adhesive out in front of me being careful not to cover my working lines and then bring one row in at a time. Just making sure very carefully that the front leading point of my piece is tracking on my working line all the way down. After I get that first row set, I can cut my starter block in half and then set one on either side. And then installation can continue on both sides. From this point, I continue the same process. Set my block, lay my adhesive, and install one full row. And then repeat the process for the next row, bringing my block down and starting the next row. This is where the installation speed picks up a lot. It's just very vital that that first row that you set is as perfect as you can make it because everything is going to be built on that foundation. After I finish the installation of the last rows, I can then come back, put some spline in, and infill the ends where I set my starter blocks. Just want to take care not to put any fasteners where I'm going to be cutting for my border. I'm ready now to transfer my lines from my border up on top of my floor. Real simple way I like to do that is I just cut a simple block like this with where I've got square edges. So then I can slide this in, line it up with my line I snapped before install at the bottom, and then I can real accurately mark at the top on both of these. It's a real simple, quick way to transfer those lines up to the top of the floor. So if we do our layout and planning correctly, we end up with a balanced and symmetrical floor on both sides. Also note that every other row, because the length is a multiple of the width, is going to align perfectly.